democratic uh, usurping of transhumanization. Uh, the very neologism um, for transhumanization, uh, transhumanar, uh, we owe to Dante, and I may return to this uh, later. Um, so then there is the Renaissance Titanism, and then there are the Romantics, which is one of the famous formulas that humanity, it is characteristic of humanity that it wants to be something more than humanity. And then there is Nietzsche, and then there is Russian cosmism, lots of things were going on uh, um, before uh, what we witness uh, uh, today. Uh, and what we witness today, and I, I'm not going to, 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 to go into this uh, now, but it is practically uh, an attempt or uh, a pressure or forcing uh, the impoverishment of the human being in the name of its uh, augmentation. Um, we witnessed it in, in, in the last two or three years. And here I have to, uh, I will dare do something which I, I, I don't think I, I, I did before, at least not, uh, uh, not in, in, in public. Um, I will try to illustrate this gap, this parallax gap, um, uh, through um, a biographical anecdote, uh, an epiphany, I might say. First of all, it's a, it's it was a bit comic uh, uh, to a certain extent. My my former husband um, left for Canada in 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 the fall of 1988 to do a PhD uh, uh, there. And he left without me and our son, uh, who was very, very young, who was four months old. So one day he uh, left the airport and the next day he called me and he was crying. And, um, and I have to say that this is uh, the first time I ever um, heard him cry. And, and I said, why are you crying? I see you on the phone, you can remember. No, many of you don't remember what phones used to be like when you had a transatlantic call. There was noise and it, you, you couldn't hear very clearly. And in the noise, I hear him crying. And he said, I want to go back. I want to, I, I, I won't stay here. And I said, why? I mean, he, he just arrived. I mean, it was not even a day. And he said, there is nothing here. And I said, how, how is it there is nothing? He said, nothing. It's nothing. There is nothing here. So I really believe this is the sort of epiphany of the um, uh, crumbling of, uh, uh, of a viewpoint uh, because there is another viewpoint and there is nothing between. And, and uh, of course he stayed. I said, come on, calm down. We are there to, to, to get to these big libraries and finally have all the books in, in the world. And, and a year later, I was in Canada and I had a sort of, I must say, uh, um, sort of similar epiphany. I don't say it's true. It's not true, obviously. This is, uh, I, I don't say it's, uh, even it's an emotion, uh, it, it's, it's not important. I, I really find it important because it, it shows this, this crisis of, of, uh, of the two incompatible perspectives, which nevertheless coexist and they're both uh, sort of constitutive. Uh, so, um, you know, the, the, a lot has been made in, in recent years about the fact that the human is an animal. Of course, the human is an animal. I mean, there is nothing new about it. And for, for us as communist children um, brought up in Marxian um, um, ideology since kindergarten, uh, I mean, this was clear. The human is an animal, but the human anim uh, animal is this type of animal. And here I came to, to my, my um, to, I'll mention this other gap which appeared later. So the, um, the human animal is the animal that wants to be human. My, the first part of my book is about this. The human animal is the woman, animal is the animal that does not want to be human. It wants to be something more. It wants to be something else. It wants to be transformed. It 
response to transcend itself and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, the viewpoint with which I came out of, uh, of Eastern Europe was precisely something like this. Uh, the human animal is an animal, but let's educate this animal. Let's give a chance to this animal to unfold all its capacities. Let's uh, um, give, um, let's create uh, the, the, the situation of uh, everybody fulfilling uh, their full potential. Let's uh, allow freedom to, to this uh, animal to, to, to follow um, uh, to the full um, its talents and, and uh, uh, it's in whatever uh, um, uh, can find in, in, in uh, they can find in themselves. Um, and in Canada, my epiphany was precisely that this is that this was over. Um, that uh, the human is not an animal; it's a broken toy. It's um, it's a wooden marionette. It's um, it's Pinocchio who for some reason did not meet uh, the blue fairy and so never never came uh, to life. It's, um, it's just you, you've gone over the hill, so you've reached this hill which sort of as if it concealed this fantastic um, um, other creature, this marvel, uh, this wonder um, uh, which the human had to become. And, and and uh, on the other side, you 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 find this uh, uh, this broken toy. Of course, I didn't stay with this, uh, and and my book uh, is uh, is um, uh, the fruit of of uh, uh, of my insistence that nevertheless um, the human is not a broken toy. There there is. Uh, something going on, what's going on exactly, uh, I, I try to articulate in, in a number of ways. Uh, but uh, here I'll come back to, to, uh, to, to another anecdote, which concerns um, um, a meeting I had uh, with a gambit. He, he came to Ljubljana to, to give a lecture there. And uh, the, the, it was a lecture on, on profanation um, his book had just appeared in, in Italian and a little later it appeared in, in French and, and in English. And then I tried to, to, uh, to convince him uh, that the human is not finished uh, and that uh, um, um, trying to argue to, 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 to oppose uh, um, certain things he said in, in, in the open. Uh, uh, that the human is, uh, is not finished. It, it's just uh, um, there is a change uh, in the mechanism of, of the production of the human. Um, it, it is uh, no longer this metaphysical anthropological machine, uh, which Agamben describes uh, in the open. Um, it's not tragic. Um, it's not driven by, by desire, uh, but nevertheless it is happening and it's, uh, it's happening in an uncanny or in a comic mode through a reduplication uh, with the machine, through some sort of uh, strange uh, redoubling and competition with the machine. This is a new, new, uh, new mode of, uh, of produ uh, production of the humans. Actually, this is one of the, the major theses in, in, in my book. And the government said, no, it's, fi it's finished. <laughs> he said, no, the human is finished. That's, that's it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's gone, this thing. I'm not sure he, he really believes it. And, uh, and judging even by, by uh, his position in, in recent years, by, and by, by his, um, heroic and rather lonely attempt, philosophically lonely, uh, to um, um, oppose uh, um, the reduction of the human um, in the manner in which we see uh, uh, it reduced uh, 
uh, during the, the the pandemic, I I, I find this um, uh, the truth of his position and not uh, not this claim about uh, um, the inoperativeness of uh, of the anthropological machine. Um, in any case. These two crises, uh, uh, the crisis uh, which came, and I'm, uh, I'm not going to talk too much about this. I, I, I hope it will be visible through the other things uh, I'm, uh, I will be saying today, but the crisis brought about uh, by, by the implosion of, of the communist uh, regimes in Eastern Europe and this, um, um, Chirotic in rise in, in artificial intelligence, uh, the developments in new new uh, technologies in, uh, in uh, communication. Uh, um, what Cristero likes to emphasize is hyper connectivity. Um, those uh, those two um, and and of course the. Uh, uh, the rise of transhumanism in this technocratic uh, um, form, which uh, which we we witness uh, in uh, recent years, uh, which is rather oblivious of the previous history of um, uh, thinking about uh, uh, the transformation uh, of the human being. Uh, these two uh, crises sort of split my. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, my my um, work on on uh, the human vis-a-vis -vis the the robot, the human and the machine, uh, um, they split it in two. So there is the first part, which is the smaller part, and uh, which was finished already finished in the nineteen eighties, um, uh, which is. I would say utopian. It, it's uh, it's utopian. So the whole book seems to cover the same ground, the same areas, the same topics, the same problems. But they, there is a dramatic shift in in the perspective, which uh, I believe emerged from um, uh, from these uh, historical changes. So the the first book treats the same things. It speaks about the disappearance of the human. It speaks about um, um uh the wavering between uh, of the human between uh, uh, the god and, and and the machine um, um, um also it's based on a huge amount of 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 literature um um we were avid readers and and uh, it was part of intense discussions on a huge a huge amount of uh, mostly science fiction, but, but also um, many other other things. And in spite of the, the similarity and, and, and the awareness of the risks, of the dangers of, uh, of um, the ne negative aspects of um, of these uh, 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 of these developments, I, I would say the the, the first part. Uh, is uh, uh, utopian, and the second part, which is much bigger in volume, um, is I should say darker, and and uh, it is dystopian in a, in a manner which I will describe through. I'll try to find it now. <clears throat> a definition by a young Bulgarian scholar, Chevdar Parushev, who recently published a book uh, called The Counter Human, uh, and it's based on, it is a discussion of anti utopia in 20th century literature. And he said that what he understands, uh, his idea of anti utopia, his uh, definition of anti, uh, anti utopia is um, uh, the effort to think the the crisis in the possibility or in our capacity to produce meaning in the concept of the human. So there's a crisis in our capacity to produce means meaning in, in, in the concept of, uh, of the human. 
Um, so there you go. I I, I think uh, we need um, we need uh, both perspectives, both the utopian and, and the dystopian. Uh, I think uh, um, they both uh, are constitutive. I think they both are necessary. But on the other hand, I don't think there is a an easy synthesis uh, before them, uh, between them. But in order to to go into into this uh, into this later reflection on 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 the human, uh, I needed to articulate this uh, this historical um, crisis which uh, um, affected us, whether we we uh, knew it or not, whether we were, were conscious of it uh, or not, wh whether it, we were um, in fact. Some of you know that there was a lot of talk about the post-communist amnesia, so it was a sort of loss of, uh, of, uh, of historical memory. And um, um, this is how, what took me to, to, to the clash and the de debates uh, from the, especially from the 1960s on, um, on humanism and anti-humanism. So we sort of, uh, I'm beginning to illustrate this uh, parallax uh, gap, um, while um, especially in French philosophy, but not only in French philosophy, it's a much broader uh, phenomenon. Um, a philosophical, so to say, critical thinking uh, took uh, the shape of anti-humanism. Um, and um, the great example, there are many, of course, uh, but uh, um, uh, the usual example is Althusser and, 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 and his work on, uh, on, on the capital. And, um, but there are, of course, a, a plethora of, uh, of other thinkers uh, uh, who are part of, of the same uh, tendency with various perspectives. Uh, and uh, um, differing in many other respects, but uh, we could um, speak of Heidegger, we could speak of Foucault in, in, this, uh, in this respect. Um, um, Sartre's position is um, um, more uh, ambiguous, uh, but still it's, it's very much uh, part of, of the debates uh, uh, in the 1960s and, and it continues in, 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 in the following decades. In Eastern Europe, it, it happened the other way around. It, it, uh, um, to a great extent, um, critical thinking, opposition to, to, uh, to the existing, uh, existing order, um, creating um, heterotopian spaces for, for um, uh, freedom of, of thought uh, such as it was, Took the, the the form of uh, of humanism, and it's uh, and it's um, very much with uh, reference to different readings of Marx. So Marx was uh, very much at the center of these debates. Uh, um, they concerned the uh, early Marx, the young Marx. What went on there? How sh uh, should it be read? But um, it, it's also complicated from that point of view that uh, it, it had a um, uh, a rather um, twisted um, um, relationship to, to the official dogma. So um, uh, you would also hear dogmatic uh, nomenclature speak of, uh, of humanist uh, values at the time. It's, it's um, a huge debate, so I go into, into uh, certain details, especially through the um, sort of friendship, let's put it like this, philosophical uh, meeting, philosophical uh, friendship between Althusser on the one, one hand and the uh, Georgian Russian uh, philosopher, uh, Merab Mamardashvili. So um, 
it, it was, uh, we could say, that it was a sort of fatal encounter because um, um, Mamardashvili went to Paris to, to, to see um, Althusser and uh, talk with him. And then um, for whatever reasons, uh, he was called back home and never allowed, <laughs> and, and not allowed to leave the country until uh, the beginning of the, uh, 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 until Gorbachev basically, the, the second half of, uh, 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 of the eighties. But uh, then Althusser was once in Moscow, so that, uh, uh, and then they would exchange letters and, and you can read some of, of these letters. So um, um, you can see uh, an interesting parallel and, uh, um, um, I tried through, uh, through their figures to, to illustrate something which I called heterotopian homonymy. So in, in these different uh, uh, spaces um, of um, East and West, by East I mean Eastern Europe, there are many Easts, and <laughs> it's a relative term of course, but I mean uh, uh, Eastern Europe, um, um, because of a number of factors, um, concepts, fundamental ideas looked the same, sounded the same, uh, used the same language, uh, but actually uh, they, they were sort of, uh, in, in the sense of Foucault, uh, inverting each other. They, they, they were reversing each other. They, they, they had, um, um, they, had opposite uh, meanings. So, as you see, I, I'm, uh, what I'm trying to say is, in order to illustrate this bifurcation of uh, of the um, thinking about the human uh, in the second half of the 20th century uh, uh, and until uh, um, until recently. Um, I introduced this uh, uh, this idea of heterotopian homonymy of of the two incompatible uh, uh, viewpoints, which nevertheless I believe, because of uh, of, of this parallax um, effect, um, produce uh, uh, the capacity to, uh, as Zizek says, to to uh, to subvert the obvious and and to try to to. Uh, uh, to find uh, new uh, new roles, um, and well, I say history of the fictional uh, artificial being, but my book is not historical in in any proper sense of the word. So the history is rather. Um, implied, uh, it, it provides uh, an important uh, reference point and, and, and framework, but, but I'm not really trying to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, write a history, it's, it's huge. It, it's, um, and it's getting more, you know, you're probably aware, you've probably see, seen many uh, of these, uh, recent uh, movies or, or, or TV series uh, treating uh, or play games. I also play video games. So there is a little uh, of it uh, in this case, but uh, there are huge sagas uh, dealing with the same topic. So it's a huge topic historically. If, it, if you have to write a history of the fictional artificial being, you may begin with Hoffman and Mary Shelley. You may begin with Homer because we find uh, the first robots, uh, we might say, in, in old Greek uh, epic. Um, it's a very, very old fantasy. Um, why I think it is important to begin uh, with the romantics, it is because um, um, there you can see something which I've, uh, I've called autonomization of the automaton. Um, you know, this is the a famous uh, Cartesian uh, uh, claim uh, in, in, uh, in the wake of Aristotle that um, 
animals are automata. I mean, Descartes says uh, animals, uh, uh, animals are just machines. They don't dif differ from uh, the clocks we can make because the clock was then the image of, of the um, major uh, uh, figure of the uh, of the machine. So they don't uh, don't differ. The difference is that God can work with very small parts. So uh, we can only make things out of big parts, but God, uh, he makes very fine machines, these animals, they're very fine machines made of very, very small parts. I was really, I was really staggered when I found this uh, in, in the car's writing because um, uh, this, uh, if you would remember, is, uh, is Frankenstein's um, a big crime. He cannot, uh, he cannot, uh, he, he says, well, because I, I couldn't make uh, um, this human being I want to create, I, I couldn't make it uh, with small parts, so I made it big. And that, this is how the monster is created. So uh, Mary Shelley is practically illustrating the kind of claim that um, the difference between God as uh, the creator of machines and man as the creator of machines is God makes can work with little uh, and fine parts and and we as humans we cannot uh, we cannot do this uh, but of course and then the car goes on to say there is a uh, um, um, difference of principle between animals as automata as machines and the human being which is a spiritual thing um, and uh, there is this uh, thing which is more uh, in in the human being uh, and, and and this is uh, uh, um, the human spiritual side. Now, with uh, what happens with the Romantics, they literally liberate this automaton because the car also says it's the body. The human body is the same thing. It's a machine. It's a machine. It's an automaton. It's but it's the spirit is something else, and 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 this is what makes uh, human beings different. Uh, what the Romantics do is they liberate, they emancipate this uh, automaton. They Take it out of, uh, subtract it from uh, uh, from the human, and let it go free. So there is uh, from this point on, we have really an intense new uh, narrative about um, artificial beings in in literature first, and then in in cinema, and then in video games, and, and uh, now we, we are really there is a flood uh, of stories like this. So I'm not really de dealing with the history as such. Uh, what I try to do is um, um, emphasize certain major, uh, major shifts in our capacity to think the human by thinking the artificial being, uh, which is in fact what, what happens. So um, um, we, um, we see, how this changes on the one hand, and on the other, this is something I love about, uh, about this area. We see also a lot of, a lot of continuity. Usually great, uh, great novels and great films and all these great narratives about artificial beings, they are very knowledgeable about uh, the previous uh, versions of, of, of this topic, of the, the, the robot topic. Uh, so there, there is a lot of um, hidden, obvious, uh, explicit or implicit reference to, uh, to earlier works. Uh, I, I do a lot about, uh, in this respect by, in, in my discussion of Ex Machina, Alex Garland's uh, film. Alex Garland is, uh, he usually doesn't uh, um, admit this in, in interviews, for example, when he speaks about this, but there is a lot going on in, in, in this film and in other of his films, which uh, uh, refers to, to, to um, authors be, before him. So what are these major shifts? Um, 
what is, what is what is how is the human uh, conceived conceptualized um, through this uh, reference through this reduplication uh, through this confrontation uh, between human and and machine. Um, there is this thing I mentioned um, that the human is never is never itself. So it, it wants to be the human is the being that wants to be human and and the human is the being that does not want to be human. And in in any of these uh, 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 two uh, capacities, it's never never coincides with itself. So that maybe well, the first thing we can say the human is this non coincidence. Uh, uh, with whatever we might call uh, human. Um, in this, when we look at uh, at, uh, at the romantics, and I mostly looked at them through by returning again and again to a single novella by Stanislav Flam, uh, which is called The Mask, and I. I think it's a fantastic, it's a great, uh, it's a great work of art. I think uh, uh, this is uh, my claim in, in, uh, uh, in at some point in this book. I think it was produced by uh, Stanislav Lem being infuriated by uh, uh, Svetan Todorov's um, introduction uh, uh, to the fantastic literature um, at some point uh, Stanislav Lem read this uh, this work uh, obviously in French because his response was before uh, before the English uh, translation appeared and and he was really mad with this and I think because of this he, he was mad about certain things which Setan Todorov said about the fantastic and uh, he wrote a an essay about this, criticizing him. But I also think this novella, The Mask, uh, is the product of, of this uh, uh, disagreement, let's put it like this, uh, 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 of uh, Stanislav Flem with uh, Todorov's uh, position. So what do, do we see in, uh, in, in this novella, which is in many ways uh, summarizing the romantic, uh, um, legacy, but also pointing towards uh, other things. It's of course um, uh, uh, the romantic emphasis on love um, and on on rebellion, on revolt, as uh, the major, um, most important defining features of the human being. It's the question of freedom. It's the question of free will. It's uh, the, the question of uh, a rebellion, but it is also love. So that uh, love is this focus of, uh, of understanding um, humanity. And it shows through the prism of uh, uh, the problem uh, of the uh, various depictions of, of artificial creatures. It's, uh, of course, uh, the situation we find in Frankenstein. It's uh, um, the fatal flaw of uh, Frankenstein is not, uh, well, it is because he cannot deal with small parts. <laughs> he, cannot, he cannot do it. So he, his monster becomes so ugly because uh, he, he, he had to work with his uh, uh, huge parts, but but ultimately uh, uh, his sin is that uh, he cannot love uh, his cre his creature, unlike God who loves uh, who loves uh, uh, his creatures. Um, and then there is the uh, problem of freedom, uh, which and free will, uh, which is at the center of. Uh, of uh, Hoffman's uh, uh, Sandman uh, and um, very much uh, can take us back to 
Kant and so on and so forth. Kant is an important philosopher for, for uh, understanding what's going on uh, on there. So we, we see this um, until pretty late in uh, uh, the history of the uh, fictional um, artificial creatures. And then something changes, and then something changes, and it changes sometime in, in the late uh, 20th century. Um, and I will, uh, because time is running up, I, I, I will illustrate it uh, for those who have seen uh, the two films Blade Runner. So there is the original Blade Runner, which is based on, on uh, Philip Dick's uh, um, novel, uh, Do Android Beam of Electric Sheep. And there, uh, the emphasis, uh, the whole question about whether the um, um, artificial creatures are um, human or not, whether we could regard them as human or not, um, it is based on uh, whether they are capable of experiencing empathy, uh, love, um, whether they are capable of creativity, and of course, uh, whether they are capable of um, experiencing uh, their mortality. So if, if, if feeling that you're mortal, this is an, another important uh, aspect. But if we uh, compare this to, to the um, uh, Blade Runner 2049, uh, we see uh, this interesting, to me, uh, quite amazing, and probably we will see something new now emerging, but it's, uh, it's too early to, uh, uh, to insist on it. Um, there's this interesting shift to um, perceiving humanity through uh, sexuality and the capacity to conceive naturally. So, if, uh, um, so the, the whole drama in, in the, in the uh, new Blade Runner is, was I born or was I made? So th this is, of course, the film gives a very nuanced and very fine, complicated uh, perspective on this, but still this is at the center. And uh, for those of you who've seen the, the saga, um, Battlestar Galactica, it is, it is at the center of what's happening there. The, the silence, the artificial creatures, they look human, they, they are absolutely in many ways indiscernible uh, uh, from, from the humans, but they cannot conceive, and this is a tragedy. So they want want to be able to uh, to conceive in, in a natural way. So suddenly from this uh, earlier emphasis on, on freedom and love and rebellion, um, some of it stays, some, some of it uh, uh, still lingers on in one way or another, but we, we have this curious uh, shift uh, towards, um, uh, towards um, Mm. Conception, natural conception is is the uh, and funny enough. I mean, this is this is certainly something which science will be able to do very soon. I mean, take away um, natural conception and uh, transfer it to laboratories. So this is probably going to to uh, become possible earlier than uh, many other things uh, which we we were imagining. Um, so the question is, the question is, and I have to wind up uh, rather quickly because, uh, um, um, yeah, it's getting too long. The question is uh, about the subtraction of the human. Why subtraction of the human? So with subtraction, I use it in a rather simplified way uh, from something that uh, Badiou says, uh, at some point, he says subtraction is the is the positive uh, uh, is the positive uh, aspect, the positive side of um, of destruction. So we can imagine subtraction in two ways. One is, one is subtracting uh, the human from the human, and what we get is the zombie. So we could go into this fascination with zombies um, on this basis, and and I all this uh, observation on. To, to my colleague uh, uh, Doreen Tenev, 
Or there is uh, the question, uh, of course, this is something which uh, transhumanists discuss a lot. Can we subtract the human into the machine? Is it, is it, uh, is it a possibility and what uh, it, would it amount to? Um, and just to see, yeah, I have a few more minutes, I think. Um, so, um, why God with machine? Because um, uh, we do get a lot of it. So uh, in, 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 um, this uh, blend, this uh, hybridization of, uh, of the divine with, uh, with the machine. So the uh, representations of, of divinity uh, as, uh, as machines and, and, and sort of the machine takes uh, on uh, the responsibilities of, uh, of, uh, of, of the God. So we, a lot of this going on in, in recent, um, in recent uh, narratives. But I will end with, um, with a short story by a Bulgarian writer, um, Svetoslav Minkov, uh, which was written in the 30s. So uh, some years after Chapek invented or made popular because he says it's, it was my brother who invented the word, but Karel Chapek made the word robot uh, uh, an international uh, word. Um, so uh, the Bulgarian writer wrote uh, um, a short story called uh, The Man Who Came From America. And the man who comes from America is actually a robot because the, the, the protagonist has a, an aunt who lives in America and things are very advanced there. So she sends uh, uh, his uh, her, uh, nephew um, a gift and this gift is, is a robot. And he says, there is a fantastic sentence in, in the story. He says, he arrived as machines do. So he arrived as, as machines do in a box, but the whole thing is that, uh, so the story is about this, that uh, uh, the machine in the box leaves the customs at the border um, by jumping in a taxi and actually by becoming the master uh, of, uh, of his human, of his human master. So, um, is a sort of comic, a, co a sort of uncanny, a sort of Kafkaesque uh, story about uh, the borderline, which uh, separates uh, uh, the human from from the robot, and and there are the custom, uh, the custom sitting there. There is a long discussion how to tax the robot. This is the, the whole this is the whole discussion is how should this robot be taxed? Uh, is it a car? Is it uh, some sort of other machine, we get a, a huge enumeration of the many machines which are already, already part of everyday existence at this point. And finally, it is the customs who decide that the robot is, is human and he jumps uh, on the other side of the border as a human being. So it's this type of philosophy of the customs. I think I'll stop here. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks so much, uh, McGlenna, for that uh, that talk. Uh, we're now open to the uh, Q and A section. So, if there's uh, anybody that has a question, you can uh, raise your hand through Zoom, um, or if you're not able to, you can uh, put it in the chat as well. So, is there anyone that has? Um, a question to start. Just a second. Oh, ah, a camellia. Yeah. Thank you for this uh, marvelous talk. Um, I found very interesting about this uh, hypothesis um, about uh, the shift um, of thinking uh, about the human uh, in terms of romantic uh, <laughs> revolt. 
and uh, ca can you hear me? I do. Yeah. Okay. And and that uh, nowadays something uh, is uh, changed. And if we return to Kristeva concept of uh, revolt and, and revolution, so could, could we think about uh, human as being able to revolt to uh, his or her human nature? And nowadays that this uh, capacity to revolt against uh, his or her nature is uh, no more capable because of uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, um, uh, being worried about uh, sexuality and uh, natural conception, and so uh, the, the 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 anxiety to be more natural, and so and if, if the nature of the human is not to keep to to some ascetic uh, type of uh, nature, something is missed as as a concept uh, nowadays. Um, I'm, I'm really, um, um, I prefer always to, to, to rely on, on, um, on literature and art, on, on things as I, I find them in, already in, <laughs> uh, in, in, um, in these fictional uh, recreations, of, um, um, uh, reconstructions of, uh, of uh, this uh, this problematic, but of course you know that I, I was totally um, you know um, very worried about uh, what happened uh, um, uh, during the uh, the pandemic because it uh, what it showed was the huge manipulability of um, of the majority uh, of people how easily how easily they they uh, they can be um led to 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 accept um whatever is is uh, the current uh, the current thing um and of course what i, I was uh, uh, really worried about uh, was a f you see now we talk over um um, over Zoom, um, uh, this is of course uh, a fantastic uh, possibility. It, uh, we couldn't do it uh, um, like this 20 years ago. Um, it, um, but when when you are forced into into yourself, and uh, um, you're basically deprived uh, of three of your five senses, as we are right now talking. Um, uh, uh, like this, um, um, what we see is uh, um, an impoverishment, as I said, a, a, a reduction uh, of uh, of the of the of the human. It's it's not uh, as the Renaissance uh, um, thinkers uh, would say. I, I want fifty senses. I mean, I want <laughs> you know. It's uh, uh, why only five? I, I want 50, uh, 50 senses. Suddenly we are reduced to, we are, uh, become prisoners uh, of, uh, of this new, uh, of this new convenience. So um, I guess you, you address um, in, in terms of, of um, uh, this threat, this danger, this, um, uh, of course, yeah, in reduction of, uh, of, of the human to, to um, which is a reduction not only of, uh, to, to, to sexuality, as you say, to the bodily, let's put it, to, to, to the biological and, and in, in Afghanistan, but it is, it is a reduction of the biological itself and the, uh, of the human as a biological being. It is a risk, it is a threat. I don't know, but I think we are, we are rebels after all. We, we, we will rebel. As Christopher says, uh, um, um, I rebel, therefore we are going to be. Okay, uh, uh, Katerina, you have a question? Yeah. Um, I've been wondering while listening to your talk, Miglena, 
about the following. It appears that you claim both at the same time that you we cannot think the human outside the concept of the automaton or the machine. There is a certain inherent link, if not embeddedness, of the notion of the human into the concept of the machine, in a way. It's been an old myth, an old narrative that is still running, basically. And as you said, um, at a certain point with the romantics on, uh, the automaton has been um, not automated, what was auton autonomized. So it seems like automaton replaced us in a way, in replace the human in a way. Uh, when thinking the human. So this is an interesting paradox, uh, yet your argument doesn't seem to be post-humanist. It doesn't sound post-humanist. It sounds like you're trying to uh, 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 yeah, vindicate actually a certain human kernel. Uh, and that's the thing that would rebel as you said at the end now. Am I understanding you correctly here? <laughs> um, yeah, well, I hope I understand uh, uh, what you say right now, but yes. Um, uh, it's uh, my major claim initially was precisely this, that while uh, uh, the anthropological machine, which um, Agamben describes in, in the open, uh, is the one which uh, constantly differentiates uh, a human from a animal. And of course, this is not the animal, my dog or my cat or, or something like that. Us, it, yeah. it is an internal, it is an internal thing. It, and it's going on uh, um, uh, through, uh, as he said, through uh, um, a certain metaphysical uh, operations. And, and, uh, and my thesis was that, uh, it's not that the machine has become inoperative, so it works, but it works in a different way. It uh, works no longer by differentiating us from, uh, from the animal. We feel close uh, and more brotherly uh, to animals than ever before, uh, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, but it works through, through this uh, uh, um, sometimes comic, sometimes uncanny and, and uh, horrifying um, um, competition and redoubling uh, with, uh, with the machine. And uh, actually, the, again, the romantics gave us uh, this lasting uh, narrative about, uh, about the double. And um, um, especially in the, there is this, uh, this uh, story about uh, uh, the shadow which becomes a, a, an autonomous uh, human being and, and in a mortal combat with, with its uh, um, origin. <laughs> with the, so we, we are in, a, in, a, in this type of, uh, if in this type of, of re reduplicating uh, combat with, uh, um, uh, with the machine and what we have to, we'll have to, I don't know what is what, <laughs> what, what I believe, uh, 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 we we have to seek uh, our new um, mechanism of of be becoming through through this battle. So mm -hmm. this is this is both the a the, different dialectic of becoming. Yeah, yeah that's so the, the the human you're vindicating basically. So yeah, yeah it's a, it's a different. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's both the pessimist and the optimist part of the <laughs> of the, uh, of the story. As always in your work. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, and, and, and uh, the comic aspect is uh, um, uh, very easy uh, uh, to see if you uh, think of C-Tripio in, in, in Star Wars, uh, getting apart, you know, and uh, for example, somebody's uh, carrying only his uh, his upper part of the body, and he's still talking, and 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 you know, um, and, and uh, even this we can go back and and um, 
um, see the beginning with uh, with Hoffman in, in this amazing scene where the creators uh, of Olympia, um, who are two, this is another topic I cannot go into everything, but this is really curious. Uh, again and again and again, we get this male couple, this male couple, which is the creator of the artificial creature. Um, Frankenstein is sort of solitary, but with with Hoffman, it's uh, it's two men. Uh, one is doing the mechanism, and the other is uh, providing the eyes because it, this is you know a more mysterious thing. And then uh, we have a similar couple uh, with um, uh, the future Eve or tomorrow's Eve uh, by Auguste Villiers, a fantastic uh, French novel from uh, from later on in the 19th century. And then we get this amazing couple in Carol Chapek's rule where uh, one of the men is a big capitalist and the other one is obsessed scientist. So uh, uh, what Chapek did, is, and it was very important, is he, he showed this marriage of, uh, of big money and, uh, and uh, scientific obsession uh, and in, into, uh, and again, an, an, a novel thing, uh, the industrial production. Uh, of, of the robot. Uh, uh, Frankenstein creates a solitary single monster. Um, uh, Hoffman's creators mm -hmm. create only one beautiful doll, Olympia. Mm -hmm. um, same thing. So the earlier uh, topics are always about the creation of a unique creature, or maybe a few, but no, not many. But with some mm -hmm. it's uh, it's also the, um, the new term uh, of of things with uh, in industrialization and this marriage of, of big capital um, and, and uh, science. Mm -hmm. May I add one more question? Just a quick one that follows up on the previous. So what is that uh, new, new, well, new way of being human that uh, you think we should emancip emancipate? You think should rebel? Uh, is that the animal part? Because you mentioned the deprivation of senses, etc., especially during uh, the COVID times, etc. It seems like you know the frust frustration is on. Uh, weighing uh, more on this physical, bodily, animal-like part of us. And are you saying this is what should rebel? Well, of, of course, in, in the sense that um, it, it happened in such a brutal, such a drastic way. Because, I agree. I because, agree. because, because if, uh, if I have to go outside of, uh, you know, uh, uh, give a further, a further perspective or horizon to, to this, of course, I'm this type of, I'm among these people who, who hope that someday we'll go to other planets, we'll, you know, um, open new worlds, be capable of, of doing this and that. And of, it might be hard to do this uh, if we keep being uh, physically the same. So I don't know, but it, uh, it, it, Mm -hmm. it, might, it, it might be hard and it might turn out to be necessary to, uh, to transform uh, uh, biologically. But to be forced at this point uh, to, de to be deprived of, of this, uh, how should I say, uh, uh, the, the body is also a, a, a reservoir uh, for rebellion. It, it uh, let's not of course, forget it yeah. is, it is. So, so uh, um, reducing it, uh, annihilating it, uh, it's not a good, it's not good news. I mean, <laughs> I agree. And, and, and we still don't know because there is one uh, curious question which emerges um, in already in the 60s with writers uh, like Stanislav Lem, but not only him, but Pan do a lot uh, on him in, in this book. Uh, so there is the question is, uh, and, and we, we can see today uh, being asked by um, various uh, engineers in, in 
artificial intelligence in, the, mm -hmm. in, in the, this area. Um, are higher modes of thinking only um, possible for non-living matter? There is uh, this question uh, appears at some point. So we reach a certain level and then going further is no longer possible for biological creatures. Or maybe it's the other way around. We don't know. We don't know. Because yeah, okay, the, fact, so... the fact that uh, computers can um, do certain things so, um, so much better than us, uh, it's still uh, not the thing that the human being is. I mean, this is... Uh, it's the, very the, interesting. The mystery is still there. I won't take more time. Uh, just a very, very uh, quick uh, remark. Uh, Thomas Nail uh, recently published uh, an article in the Salona, but it also derives from his um, philosophical scientific work, let's say. And he explains there how much faster actually the subconscious the human subconscious, what happens in the brain on, on the uh, on neuro, uh, neurological level, how much faster of a computing that is, that actually a computer cannot compete with. On this level, we are super fast computers, but it's uh, not on the level of the conscious or the rational. Okay, but let's not uh, go further. In the, let's leave more time for the others. Okay, so if there's any other uh, questions, you can raise your hand uh, in the Zoom room. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll just ask a quick, uh, sort of not really a follow-up question to that, but um, something sort of, is similar. I mean, there's the so you speak about the limits or potential lack of limits for physicality of, of the sort of human in the sense of um, I don't know what you would call it biological adjustment or something. But we also have, of course, things um, like virtual reality, um, which in a certain sense is that, but also not that whatsoever. Um, because your sort of physicality is completely removed and you're transformed into a world in which um, is supposed to be completely different than anything is sort of possible. But this possibility is, of course, a limited and also um, sort of invaded and pervasive, pervaded by all sorts of things, including um, ads and <laughs> uh, capitalist things of this sort. So is a sort of very general question, I suppose. I was wondering what um, you sort of think of this potential move to this sort of thing, or sort of heavier weight placed on uh, virtual reality and whatnot. <laughs> Actually, the, uh, uh, the next book in a series, uh, we began with this publishing house, which published my book, is called The View Virtual Human Being, uh, uh, an essay on phantomatics. It's by Nikolai Genov. I, I see he, he, he's here, or maybe he's. <laughs> yes, he's here. <laughs> okay. So, so he's he's going into into this um, uh, into this area, uh, but through a return to to an amazing uh, book, um, a philosophical, theoretical, uh, future uh, future futurological book by Stanislav Lem, which is called Summa. Uh, uh, summa technologie, um, obvious reference to uh, uh, Tuma of Aquino. And um, I'm, I, I guess I'm st um, still in many ways uh, an old fashioned uh, um, um, woman, but um, uh, to me, um, a virtual reality, of course, presents certain uh, very novel features. Uh, uh, but ultimately, uh, we have before it uh, all this um, experience, civilizational experience, I, I should put it, 
uh, with um, um, with art, uh, with literature, with theater, uh, with uh, cinema, with our capacity through imagination to to uh, um, inhabit uh, um, uh, different uh, levels of uh, uh, um, transforming ourselves into 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 something else. So. So to me, unless we are speaking of, uh, of a virtual reality which totally annihilates, uh, and uh, Lam is discussing this, uh, totally annihilates the awareness that there is another reality, but then it's no longer virtual, we're there. I mean, this, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. It, it, it's something that's coming, but uh, I'm not really the dealing with this. Maybe Nikolai wants to say something. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, thanks for that answer. Um, is there any other questions? Okay. Let me just check. Okay, so if there's uh, no more questions, uh, then that'll bring us to the end of the seminar. So a huge thank you to Miglena, of course, for her talk and for patiently answering um, the questions. And for those of you that are in the room that are also in her intensive study course with Kristova, um, you'll be seeing her again soon. Um, so thanks again so much. And yeah, have a great night. Thank you. Thanks.